Coming up on Newton's Apple, hypothermia, how our bodies survive extreme cold. Also, why can't the moon keep a straight face? We'll find out about the changing phases of that heavenly body. All this and more next on Newton's Apple. Welcome to Newton's Apple. Newton's Apple is made possible by Grant from DuPont, makers of better things for better living. And also by this station and other public television stations. And now your host, science correspondent, Ira Flayton. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome again to Newton's Apple. If you wonder about nature, marvel at technology or the human body, if you're just curious about the world around you, then you've come to the right place because we're here to answer your questions. So, why don't you say we get right to our first question. And this time, it comes from... Jerry Fallon. Jerry had an interesting question. Why don't you tell everybody? How do those people who go swimming in the middle of the winter survive the cold water. Would you like to do that, Jerry? I know I wouldn't. <laughs> In fact, you really have to see it to believe it. This is more than just a costume party. That's real ice and snow, and the water is barely above freezing. Even though it's the middle of winter, these crowds are determined to enjoy the traditional New Year's Day swim, celebrated by polar bear clubs from coast to coast across the chilly north. How small you feel. Personally, I think they look a little nuts, but you have to admit it appears these swimmers were in perfect health and it sure looked like they were enjoying the icy water. How do they do it? Well, to find out, we formed our own polar bear club right here, led by Dr. Robert Pozos from the University of Minnesota in Duluth. Welcome to the program, Dr. Pozos. Hello, Ira. How are y you? You aiming to get in this thing? No, I'm not, but Greg Fredericks is going to be doing that. Nice to see you, Greg. Okay. Better you than me. <laughs> You're going to put him in here? Why? Well, first off, we're going to put him in to study human response to cold, but notice that he's really uh, wired for sound, as we say. Who's we're that? looking at his heart rate and his core temperature, so we don't recommend everybody doing this. You have to really have physicians don't, around, etc. Don't cetera. try this at home. That's exactly right. Okay. Okay. What we're going to do is put him in, if you turn on the recording system right there. Right. This so the monitor is right. That's right. We got that going. Okay, great. Go right ahead. Now, a lot of people think that once you get in, in ice cold water, cardiac arrest time. You're going to die right. immediately. Well, watch what happens when he gets in here, all right? There's going to be a certain amount of discomfort. Just watch his face. There's going to be a certain Great. amount of inspiratory I'm, problems. I feel freezing just watching him. Okay. Okay, now, the body has certain normal responses that occur all the time, all right? Sure, he's cold. There's a certain amount of discomfort, but he's not dead yet. Take a look at this. <laughs> Let me okay? uh, How are you, all right? He's <laughs> oh, cold. He's okay. cold, all right? Okay. Now, what is going on inside his body? Why, first of all, he's got his hands clasped next to him. It's just instinctive. He doesn't want that cold water coming close to him. He wants to keep as much of his body away from that cold water. So he's actually just trying to curl himself up in a ball. Mm -hmm. right? Number two, he's beginning to shiver a little bit. He's still breathing a little bit hard. That's going to continue for about another mm -hmm. minute or so. And then he'll eventually begin to shiver. Mm -hmm. Okay. And shivering is his body's mechanism of trying to keep warm. That's right. That's one of his mechanisms, as well as muscular contraction. Okay. Well, we better let him out of here. I think it'd be a good idea. <laughs> okay, Greg. Greg, why don't you come on out? Come on out. You need good some job. help? <laughs> All right. Oh, he looks cold. Well, this, oh, these are normal responses. Mm. Now, we, we have a doctor here. Uh, who's going to take care of him and help That's warm right. him up. That's he's right. all right, right? He's, he's fine. He's, like he's really doing all right. I'm concerned. Okay. There you go. No, we, we're always concerned we'll, about subjects. We'll check with him later. That's fine. Okay. Now, uh, he looked like he was freezing to death. I, what was going on with his body to try to keep him warm? What the body was trying to do is going to channel the blood from different parts of his legs and arms towards his core, his heart, lungs, and brain. And I'll show you that in a demonstration I have over here for you. All right, let's okay. go take a look. This doesn't look a lot like Greg, Doc, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> well, I really, this is Greg, this is me, this is you, this is all of us. This is the core temperature I was talking to you about. Mm -hmm. As Greg went into that cold water, all of a sudden, uh, the blood from his legs, from his arms, are being channeled up to this area right in through here. Mm -hmm. okay? 
And what happens to the temperature of the blood? Does it start to drop inside his body? Uh, eventually it does. Right now your temperature is 98.6 and so is Greg's. And if he stayed in the cold water long enough, mm -hmm. as he stayed in there, he would begin to shiver. His muscles would contract. But if you begin to lose the battle, what happens is that it slowly falls. And it slowly falls. It doesn't fall very fast. And mm -hmm. as it falls, Eventually, when it hits 95 degrees, that's what we call the beginnings of hypothermia. 95, that's where hypothermia, because a lot of people wonder about hypothermia. That's right. How far down could it go before you start really getting into trouble? Well, you're really in trouble at 95, mm -hmm. and, but the temperature can continue to go down, down, actually, as far as 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees, mm. and the patient can still uh, survive. If you do things properly, the patient can recover and you can go back to a normal temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Because we hear, we hear stories about the children falling through ice and lakes right. and things like that where their, their core temperature has gone down and yeah. they're able to become ba come back to normal healthy lives. Yeah, a person in a snowdrift for 10 hours, whatever. What really happens is that cold really cools down your heart and your brain so you don't need as much oxygen or, mm -hmm. as, or as much glucose and therefore everything works real slow. Mm -hmm. and therefore, you can sur survive for prolonged periods of time. But what does this do to your reflexes, to your muscles, to the parts of your body that need to be working? Ah, that's a good question. I have an experiment I'm going to try for you. All I'm right. I'm show you. Looks very, very interesting. Uh, ah. I've been yeah. a guinea pig in experiments before. Okay. What is the big a, idea? This is a good one here. What we're going to do, this is a container that has a hot water, say 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. This one has uh, cold water, 50 degrees. Now, what I want you to do is going to be a contest. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to try and take as many pennies out of here as fast as you can, put them in that yellow bucket, okay? All right. Are you all set? I'm ready. Go. All right. Just count them out there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, keep going. Seven, eight. Come on. Good. Good. Okay, now. Eight. All right. Now dry your hand off, and then we're going to try it again. And I'll make this interesting. What I want you to do for is to get as many pennies as you can out of there and put them in the green bucket. For every one that you get over eight, I'm going to give you a dollar. Okay? <laughs> Same period of time. All right. Seconds, seconds. Okay? Here we go. One, two, three, go. Oh! That's cold. <laughs> well, it isn't. It's the same temperature as Greg was in. Okay? Two. <laughs> Come on. You got to get up to eight. You can do better. Four, you can do better. Five. Come on. Six. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have to say, I did not realize how cold 50 degree water really is. Yeah, the key thing is you said water. It's water that takes heat from your body so much faster. Because if you were in the air and you walk outside in 50 degree air, it doesn't feel right. half as you cold as that. Just the way we are, but cold water is a real problem. Now I understand why if you fell, if your whole body fell into something like that, you would be in trouble. Yes, and that, in fact, is, is what we usually do in our experiments up in Duluth, is we look at the human response to cold at 50 degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. And mm -hmm. In fact, I have a tape to show you of that. Oh, let's, let's okay. go look at that, yeah. Okay, there's the hypothermia lab, and there again is Greg Fredericks. He's going to be going into the cold water. Notice he's in street clothing. Mm -hmm. We use street clothing to simulate you falling, you know, out of a boat or something. He has a life jacket on, though, which is very important. He looks like he's getting as cold, though, as he was in our studio. Take a look at that. He's, he stopped uh, breathing for a second, and as we're continuing to monitor him, watch what eventually happens. Mm -hmm. He's going to begin to shiver. And now he has a monitor hooked to his mouth. What's That's happening right. there? He's get, we're getting him set up so we can monitor his vital signs at all times. You can take a look. There is the shivering that's beginning. Is shivering a healthy thing? Do you want to shiver when you're cold? You want to shiver when you're cold, but not in cold water because a shiver will, will agitate that water and you're going to get colder oh faster. Look at that. Yeah. Now here he's being tested for, for what reason? Well, the same thing we did on you, but on a greater scale. We're testing the amount of force he can produce. Initially, he could generate 60 kilograms of force. Now, if you take a look now, he's generating something like 50 kilograms of force, all right? So his uh, muscle action really is getting less. Yes, it will be severely impaired very early on in the beginnings of acute cold stress. So uh, by the time you're in the water for a good number of minutes, you really have lost your ability to almost save yourself. That's right. You lose the ability to swim, to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 30 minutes now he's getting out. Right. He looks like he's okay. Yeah, now, he'll be fine. At this point, I would say, let me jump into a hot tub. <laughs> let me warm up. Would you, do you throw him into a hot tub? No, now? that's the worst thing you can really do, Ira, because... The hot tub really isn't the way to warm him up. This is the way to warm him up is to take off his wet clothing and just let him begin to shiver himself. Warm. Really? Yeah. Some people would say, give him a, a drink of alcohol, you know, that kind of yeah. heats you up. Yeah, what about a, that? That's also uh, forbidden. Just don't do that because even though you get a false sensation of warmth, in the long run, alcohol is counterproductive. So you give him a hot cup of yeah, cocoa him, or something. In his case, he's not shivering that much. He can hold that cup and he's doing pretty good and he, he can eventually warm himself. That's pretty happy. Yeah, that's the all-American kid type.
Fascinating. What about the psychological factor of being cold? Does it help to be a little bit nuts to go out there in the ocean in the wintertime? I think the, the mental attitude is so important. I mean, mm. if you know it's going to be cold and you can handle that initial stress, you can do fine. If you don't think you can handle it, you're going to have trouble. Mm. But it's mental attitude that's very important. All right. Now, how about uh, different kinds of people? I mean, different people handle cold differently. Sure. First off, fat is beautiful. Okay, so if you have that insulation on there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep you iso isolated a little bit from the environment. Mm -hmm. That's good for you. Uh, women seem to tolerate the cold better than guys do. We mm -hmm. don't know why, but they do. All right, uh, in addition to that, layering is a good idea. You mean like clothing? Things that's like right. That. That's mankind's real answer to the cold stress. You have mm -hmm. the sweater on, then you put a jacket on. You really are practicing layering. I'm not quite ready for this pool yet. Okay. <laughs> we have the ultimate now in the way of, of, of isolating you from the environment, and it's a, what we call a survival suit. Okay. Oh, goodness. I almost didn't recognize this Greg in there, This right? is Greg again, and he's in uh, what we call the, the survival suit. Huh, and it looks like a giant scuba diving outfit. Or a Gumby suit, whatever. Gumby, it looks like Gumby. All right, now as he gets into the water, this is oh, the same boy. temperature water we had before. Mm -hmm. Now, just so you we take a look, and you're going to see what happens in terms of his response. He's not shivering this time. Not shivering? Now, you can talk to well, him now. Me, Greg, you got to feel a little warmer this Warm time. Warm as toast. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel warmer just looking at him. This suit is designed to keep you warm at zero degree centigrade for up to six hours. Freezing. In other, in other words, if this thing was almost a whole, whole layer of ice, mm. this would, should keep him warm for up to six hours. And, and you'd use this on board ship or someplace else? On board ship, anybody, oil exploration, any place when there's any severe kind of cold water, this is the way to go. Thank you, Greg, for putting up with us today. Thank you, Dr. Pozo, for pleasure. this chilling demonstration. Okay. We'll be back with the warmer part of our program in just a minute.